Today on Gadget Class, we're taking a look at a portable power bank with solar and weather resistant capabilities. Uh, my main interest in this device is whether or not it's actually going to be able to charge my devices via 100% solar on the go and just how weather resistant is it. So those are my main two buying factors for this device and I'll tell you whether it's worth that or not here in a minute. Let's take a look at the box and what you get inside. Quality of life is change. They probably contracted this box design out to a fortune cookie factory. Pretty generic box. You can get the same product all over Amazon and all over eBay. I'll put a link right up here in the corner and down in the description as well. You can get them pretty cheap. They're around 10 bucks. Um, nothing fancy and pretty inexpensive. In the box you get an instruction manual written in both Chinese and English. Pretty generic instructions. They actually don't even say anything about the solar and how well it works or anything like that. So it's basically just a generic power bank instruction manual. But they do give you a nice little short uh, cheapo cable for charging both the device and your external devices as well. It does have two USB ports for charging two devices simultaneously, although it is only 500 milliamp hours and it's kind of weak, um, you're not going to end up being able to charge two devices at the same time very well. Um, but the capability is there if you want it. Um, in terms of weatherproofness, uh, these flaps are pretty flimsy and they do not fully seal. You wouldn't really want to rely on them keeping water out of the ports. And for that reason alone, it is not very weather resistant. But then you take and uh, peel this back. Oh my god, look at that. Big holes all over the place. And this is loose. I mean, that's going to do a little bit. It's going to shed a lot of major water. But um, prolonged rainfall is just going to seep down in there, start hitting the circuit board, corroding contacts, maybe shorting things out. I mean, all over. You got holes everywhere. So, it is maybe weather resistant to a small degree, uh, but it is not weather proof, and it doesn't, I wouldn't even give it an IP rating. Uh, I guess it might have a small IP rating, but I, I wouldn't trust it. If you're going to take this on a backpacking trip, take some super glue, glue these rubber bumpers on, glue that seam right there down the middle. Um, try to get it sealed up as much as you can, and it'll give it a little bit more weather, weather resistant. Um, but in terms of weatherproofing, it's not that great. In terms of functionality, it, it does work pretty well as your basic battery bank. I mean, it'll charge up uh, a modern smartphone like my Samsung Galaxy S5. It'll charge it uh, from critical battery all the way up to full uh, within about two hours, but it'll drain this thing completely. So it's got about enough power to charge one modern smartphone. Um, and it, that part of it does work pretty well. The charging part works pretty well when it's sitting out in the sun. You'll see each of these lights flash and turn. But I've had this actually sitting outside getting six hours of light a day um, pointed directly at the sun at an angle. And it is only up to the second power level. And I'm guessing it's probably not going to get much more than the third power level. So four days in full sun and we're only up to level two. Um, that's not going to give you enough power to use your cell phone. I mean, it'll give you emergency power. Um, if you got this along with you and you're out there being chased by monsters, werewolves, or zombies, um, and you want to sit in the sun for four days and your phone is out of juice, you could plug it in and, and charge your phone a little bit. Uh, but it's not going to be enough to get uh, full use out of your phone. You're not going to be using your phone as your video camera out in the woods using this as your power source. It's just not going to happen. So the question is, being out in the full sun, can you plug your phone in and have it even work at all? Well, we're going to go outside here and test that now. Here we are outside. It actually took about three hours using both USB ports to charge both my Samsung Galaxy S5 and this uh, Bluetooth speaker here. It took three hours to get down from the second power level all the way down to the point that it shut off. Um, so I actually had to wait till the next day to do this video. It is uh, coming on three o'clock here, so the sun is not um, right overhead, but uh, it should give us a good, uh, good power experiment here. What I've got here is a Samsung Galaxy S2. It is dead to the point that it will not turn on. 
and this here has been uh, depleted to the point that it shut itself off. So if we turn it on now, you'll see the light is flashing blue real fast. That means it is low on power, very low on power. That means it's about to shut off. And it just did because it was shaded. <laughs> Can't shade it at all. And then uh, make sure this starts charging. There it goes, it is charging. I know that's really hard to see with the sun. Let's turn it on. So the real question here is if you're out in the woods and your phone is completely dead and the power bank is completely dead, um, will you be able to use your phone to uh, make a phone call, uh, maybe even check email or check your text uh, maybe once a day? Um, maybe just for light phone use while you're out in the woods. All right, we're on. It says charging 0%. Let's see if we can make a phone call. This phone is not activated. So we made a phone call. Let's try something really, uh, really power hungry. Let's start Netflix. Turn on Wi Fi. And it just shut itself off. So we got pretty far there, but actually what happened is that this ran out of power. Let's turn it back on. No. We're charging again. Turn it back on. Well, at least we were able to make a, a phone call. If you were being chased by zombies or werewolves, uh, you might be able to call for help. But this was completely dead. If you let it sit in the sun for a good hour or two, uh, you'd probably be able to do a, a quick email check session, answer your text or check your voicemail, that sort of thing. Um, if you left it in the sun all day long, you might be able to use it for uh, 20, 30 minutes. Uh, but it's not going to be your primary power device. If you want something that's going to fully recharge your phone or your other gadgets while you're out in the woods, you're going to need something a little bit bigger. It's just not capable of uh, fully charging anything. But it is good for emergency power. It does act well as a normal power bank. Uh, the way the charging circuit is set up and with the lights and the button, it works pretty well. So all around, it's, I'd give it probably an 8 out of a ten, 8 out of 10. Uh, is it worth carrying it on, out in the woods? I would say so, unless you're doing an extreme backpacking trip where every ounce counts. It is it is slightly heavy, uh, but I think it would be worth it. It'd give you that extra little, little bit of power to check your email, um, answer your phone calls, and that sort of thing while you're out in the woods. So be sure to subscribe to the channel. Check out the link up here in the corner and down in the description below uh, where you can get these on Amazon or eBay real easy.